All right, my friends, we are going to look at the simple pendulum, which is just a mass on the end of a string, um, versus a physical pendulum, which is when you hang uh, pretty much any object uh, uh, from one point and then let the object swing back and forth. Um, so in this case, the physical pendulum is just going to take the form of this blue stick that you see here. Well, to start analyzing the motion of these things, you use the, well, rotational version of F equals MA, or we'll use torque as I alpha. Uh, so starting with a simple pendulum, uh, you'd have gravity acting down from the center of the, from the point mass. Um, and you'd also have tension uh, acting diagonally along the string, although I'm not going to draw that in because that wouldn't make any torque about the attachment point for the pendulum. Um, so what we're going to do is find the torque created by uh, mg, by the weight. Well, to find torque, what we need is the component of gravity that is perpendicular to the string, which would be this little green arrow. And you can see it's acting at a distance L away from the, um, from the axis of rotation, or from the point where the string attaches. Um, and so what that's going to mean is our torque is going to be mg sine theta, which is the magnitude of this um, component of gravity that's perpendicular to the string, uh, and the full distance L. So torque is minus mg sine theta, the force, times the distance L. And then that's going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the point mass, ml squared, um, times the angular acceleration. Uh, over on the physical pendulum side, you also would have mg acting, but now that mg is acting at the center of the stick, we'll assume it's a uniform stick. Um, and so when you go to calculate the torque, that it's important then that that weight is acting at only half the distance that it was acting on the simple pendulum. And so you end up getting mg sine theta times L over 2 for the torque instead of mg sine theta times L. Uh, and so what you see here is we have half the torque, well, assuming the masses were the same. Um, later, we'll see the mass will cancel out of consideration. But for now, we could think of it as if the masses were the same, there'd be only half the torque on the physical pendulum side. Um, but making up for the fact, or more than making up for the fact that there's half the torque, is it's only got one third of the rotational inertia. The moment of inertia of a stick about the end um, is one third ml squared. So if you have half the torque, um, twisting something with only half the torque would, would tend to make it uh, not want to rotate as quickly. Um, but more than making up for that is the fact that on the physical pendulum, it has only one third the moment of inertia. So that's something that would make it uh, easier to um, uh, change its rotational motion or to give it an angular acceleration. Um, so if both of these effects were, say, if it had half the torque and half the moment of inertia, um, then the, the period of oscillation would be the same for both the physical pendulum and the simple pendulum. But because the torque goes down by a factor of two, but the moment of inertia goes down by a factor of three, even more, that means that this thing is going to swing back and forth faster than the simple pendulum. Um, so if we continue working with this to ultimately get, say, the angle as a function of time, um, over on the simple pendulum side, you'd get this uh, differential equation by just substituting the second derivative of theta with respect to time. Um, and then over on the physical pendulum side, you'd get a similar expression just with an extra factor of uh, three in the numerator here and two in the denominator. Um, and making the small angle approximation, um, letting sine theta be about equal to theta, we would get these two relationships. And so on the simple pendulum side, you get the familiar answer that uh, theta is like theta max times cosine root g over lt plus a phase. Um, you get a very similar expression on the physical pendulum side, except for the extra three and the two. And then these trig functions repeat every time the argument of the trig function gets to two pi. And so using that, you can get an expression for the period. And you get uh, 2 pi root L over G for the period of the simple pendulum and 2 pi root 2 L over 3 G. So in other words, the period is reduced by a factor of root 2 thirds for the physical pendulum. So here is a simple pendulum made out of a magnet hanging from a string uh, next to a physical pendulum that's just a wooden dowel. Um, and in these cases, uh, they're not equal masses, but they are equal lengths. Um, 91 centimeters in this case. Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to set them into motion. 
and you notice the stick, the physical pendulum, swinging with a uh, higher frequency than the simple pendulum. Now they're back together, but then you can see the stick pulls ahead um, because it's simply going back and forth faster. It's like time 20 oscillations. So uh, for 20 cycles with the simple pendulum, it was 38.4 seconds. Um, with the physical pendulum, well, it shouldn't take as long. And well, it didn't. It was only 31.4 seconds for the 20 cycles. Um, if you actually bother to calculate, you can see that those times are different um, by a factor of root two thirds. Um, but if you end up solving for the period or dividing the 38.4 by 20, you find that the simple pendulum took 1.92 seconds for a single cycle. And the physical pendulum took 1.57 seconds for a single cycle. Just for fun, I put this data back into the two um, relationships just to see what um, value I could get for G from like a one data point experiment. And when you put that uh, value of the period, 1.92 seconds with L equal 0.91 meters, um, well, you get G equals 9.71 meter per second squared. So near, you know, about a 1% uh, error from the experimental value of say 9.81. And then likewise um, with the physical pendulum. Um, so you can see this relationship really works and does predict the, the faster oscillation for the physical pendulum. So hopefully you find that helpful and thanks for checking this out.